Hello everybody, welcome to Short Shot Archery, Anthony here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, fingers versus a shooting machine and how the two relate to arrow speed. Uh, I'm going to answer the age-old question, uh, you know, are your fingers going to be as efficient at releasing an arrow as a mechanical release on a shooting machine? Well, first, I'm going to go through all the specifications of the bow I used, the arrow I used, uh, even the string material and things like that. And then uh, towards the end of this video, I will actually get to uh, my average of speeds for uh, the fingers and the average of speeds for uh, the shooting machine. Of course, full information will be available at shoreshotarchery.org. Uh, please look under the archery data tab and look under the shooting machine tab there and you can actually find the full spreadsheet that I put together on everything I used uh, if some of it does not uh, make it into uh, the video. Uh, with that I will wrap it up with uh, you know my conclusion about uh, using a shooting machine versus fingers and uh, how we can apply this to our, our daily archery lives. So first off I want to talk about uh, the bow. Now this bow is a piece of equipment that I use daily so I am very comfortable with using this bow and uh, that is that is an advantage. I was trying to give some advantages to uh, us humans because the machine doesn't care what bow it is it's going to release it regardless so the only real advantage I gave us humans against the machine is the fact that I have shot this bow so much that I am unbelievably comfortable with it. Uh, it feels great. So I did not put a bow I haven't shot too often in my hand. I made sure that I was very confident and comfortable with how this bow shoots. And uh, that's what I did. Uh, so it's not really an advantage. It's just kind of the obvious. But it probably does benefit the numbers for uh, the human finger shooter. A little bit over the numbers for the shooting machine. If I just picked up some bow and shot it, I probably won't shoot it as smooth as the bow that I'm always used to shooting. Uh, with that, let's get into uh, the riser. The riser I have here is a gray AIX riser, 25 inch. So now let's move on to limb weight. So these are win and win NSG limbs. Uh, they are 40 pound limbs. I have them set to uh, about 46 pounds. We'll get to that uh, further down in the, uh, the data as I go through it. Uh, but I did measure the weight of each limb, the physical weight of each limb. And those physical weights were for the top limb, uh, 6.98 ounces for this top limb. And for this bottom limb is 7.5 ounces. So there is a difference between the top and bottom limb of 0 0.07 ounces. Um, it does give you a total weight of 14.03 ounces or 0.876 pounds for anybody interested. I know it's not something that we uh, normally share a lot in archery, but I think it is important. Now, of course, after testing these limbs with uh, my Short Shot Archery tester here, I did, I did get an average weight of 45.746 pounds after five pulls because, well, that's the weight I happen to pull uh, with this setup. Now for the SSA limb rating, uh, the draw weight per physical weight, um, it does get a rating of 52.17. That might change a little bit if we do take the dampener off of that, but I thought it was something to include. Um, it's one of the faster uh, sets of limbs uh, that I own. It's not the fastest, but uh, it was. It's a, it's a good test. It's a good basis for uh, this test. Uh, because most limbs should be right around uh, this rating. Of course, if you want to know more about that rating, definitely check out shoreshotarchery.org. I have a spreadsheet on uh, SSA ratings, which is Shoreshot Archery Ratings. I'm now rating limbs on a rating scale based on their draw weight and physical weight. Uh, we divide those two and we get that number. With that, we're gonna continue on to uh, the arrow. Uh, the arrow is very important because if you have two different arrows, you can get different readings. So this arrow that you see here is the actual arrow that I used, and I used it for shooting with my fingers and shooting with the shooting machine. I use this arrow right here 
Um, for the entire test, it never changed. So this is an Easton X10. This is a 410 uh, C3 carbon uh, for the spine. The total weight is 385 grains. Um, we're getting those grains not only from the shaft, but from the Easton pin knock and Easton pin. Uh, we're using K&K uh, &K, uh, Jet 6 SV uh, spin wings on here. Uh, these should be the uh, inch and a quarter size. Along with that, I am also using a 120 grain tungsten point, which is probably now making sense how I can break down the spine of this length of arrow uh, to make that happen. Actually, on that note, uh, the length of arrow is 30.51 inches in length from the throat of the knock to the end of the carbon, not counting the point. Um, I'm just following how Easton does it because I'm pretty sure that is the most common way people measure uh, the length of their arrow. So uh, with that, let's continue on to some more information. The string. The string is important. Um, it definitely plays an important role with how fast the bow is. Well, since I use the same bow, I use the same string. I personally made this string for this bow. It's made out of Fast Flight Plus in black. Uh, sometimes color does matter depending on how heavily dyed it is uh, from talking with uh, archers, uh, especially archers out of Korea. They seem to do a lot of testing on that and they feel that different colored strings actually make a performance difference. I have yet to prove that, but they say they have. Um, with that though, uh, this is a 20 strand fast flight string. Uh, the center string and end loops are Angel Archery Dyneema ASB. Uh, and other than that, uh, that paints you the picture of the setup I'm using. Uh, basically, I think everything that I could possibly supply you uh, information wise uh, for this test. Again, if you really want it all truly spelled out, check out the website, it's there. Um, it's going to be hopefully continually updated as I get more information of other limbs. This video and the information won't change because it's, it's set in stone now. But as I test out more limbs and, and things in the future and maybe even do more finger tests, um, we will see how this develops. Uh, especially since uh, I would love to have the opportunity to shoot a uh, video and test uh, what a world-class shooter uh, would do versus a machine like how much cleaner is Brady's shot than mine uh, because you're gonna see in a minute uh, you know the speed difference between my shooting and a machine so I'm really curious if Brady will uh, be able to match the machine or not so with that um, after shooting five shots in a row I took the average of the speed so for the NSG limbs with the dampener a uh, shot out of the shooting machine, they came in at an average of 202.4 FPS. So 202 feet per second with, with the 0.4 at the end. So almost, almost working. So it's kind of working on that, that, that 203, but 202.4 feet per second. Uh, quite fast. And uh, as you're going to see, it's, it's going to be a bit faster than uh, my fingers. So with my fingers on the same limbs, uh, with the same dampener, with another five shots, I shot an average of 197.6 feet per second. So pretty good. So the shooting machine is 4.8 feet per second faster than my fingers. So I did what I could, everybody. Um, I would really enjoy seeing what a world-class shooter, especially like a, like Brady or um, if Chef's interested in doing this or uh, Kim Woo Jin, any of those uh, really high-class shooters. You know, I'm not naming everybody, but a, a world-level shooter, world-class level shooter, I would love to redo uh, this test and see uh, how they compare to me and how... Uh, you know, their, their whole shot performs. It would be really interesting to see. Uh, now, if we do the math, though, and we take um, the shooting machine average of the 202.4 and we take uh, the finger average of the 197.6, we actually get a 1.02% speed difference. So basically a 1% speed difference. That's not a lot if, if, if you really think about it. Like it is, but it isn't. It's only 1%. If somebody says, oh, you'll get 1% more back on, on whatever, 
for the most part, you don't really take it that seriously because we're kind of conditioned to expect 1% to not be a lot. But uh, in archery, it seems like you're really playing this little percentage game and 1% uh, is going to make a difference. Um, if you compare it to some of my other videos, not that I exactly have them on hand, but this could definitely be a ring or so difference at 70 meters. Like, this shooting machine would get a better sight setting than I can get because it's just shooting cleaner shots than I can shoot. So in conclusion, uh, we, we pretty much got the result we all should have expected. Uh, there, there's really not a reason for me to be able to beat uh, a shooting machine. It's a machine. It would be basically recurve versus compound in a in a sense. In the sense that the compound is going to shoot the mechanical release and the recurve is going to use its fingers. Well, the shooting machine has a mechanical release similar to a compound bow. And well, I just use my fingers. So I was pretty much set up to lose uh, this match. Uh, but other than that, uh, it was super fun. Definitely want to try it out with and you know, a more world-renowned shooter. I shoot well, but I am not uh, at this point in time like Brady Ellison status in my quality of shooting. Uh, the other important takeaway from this is, um, if a company puts out information in the future saying that their limbs are, you know, X speed, then you can be pretty certain to take one percent off of that. And at the minimum, that should be the speed you shoot. So um, if XYZ Bow Company says, oh, we got a new set of limbs at 45 pounds, you can get 220 feet per second. That's probably with a shooting machine if they don't tell you. And if it is, then you as a consumer can now expect to take about 1% off of that, maybe 1.5% off of that. And that should be the speed you get with your fingers. So uh, I think this is a pretty important test for figuring out things like that uh, because it gives you a, a pretty good idea on you know what to expect from a bow. So next time your friend is uh, you know telling you how oh they ran their their limbs you know their bow through a shooting machine and they got 210 feet per second, then you can actually safely assume that uh, their actual speed of their bow when they're not shooting it, if the machine were to shoot it for them, is probably about 1% higher. So uh, that wraps up this video. So now that you're in the know about uh, fingers versus shooting machines, let me know what you think down below. Uh, if you have any additional ideas on this, um, if there's enough or it really gives me a, a, a good idea on, on something else to add to this, I'd be happy to make a video about it in the future sharing more information. Again, all the data from this video um, is put nicely into a spreadsheet so that you can check it all out for yourself. Um, I'm pretty sure all my math is correct, especially since I have the computer doing it after I set up all the formulas and stuff. So we should be in good shape there and I should be really accurate on my numbers uh, regarding that. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching. Uh, Definitely be sure to check all that out though. Uh, like and share this video, that would be excellent. And as always, happy shooting!